Good evening and welcome to this special Vote 2014 edition of Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Tonight's show is a debate sponsored by Clean Elections. We'll hear from candidates competing in the Republican primary for state treasurer. As with all of Arizona Horizon's debates, this is not a formal exercise. It's an open exchange of ideas, an opportunity for give and take between candidates for one of the state's most important offices. As such, interjections and even interruptions are allowed, provided that all sides get a fair shake and we will do our best to see that that happens. The treasurer's office serves as the state's bank and also manages the state's investments. Three Republican candidates are competing to be the state's next treasurer. They are, in alphabetical order, investment professional Jeff DeWitt, former Tempe Mayor Hugh Hallman, and former state Republican Party Chair Randy Pullen. Each candidate will have one minute for opening and closing statements. Earlier, we drew numbers to see who goes first, and that honor goes to Jeff DeWitt. Thank you, Ted. I am Jeff DeWitt, and I have been in the finance industry for 21 years. I'm the only non-politician in the race, and the, the job of the state treasurer is one that handles $30 billion of inflows and outflows a year and oversees about $12.5 billion in our state's investments. When you look at the job title for the treasurer, uh, it's an administrative role, and the, the word you hear the most often is invest. We oversee the investments, we handle investments. To do this job in the private sector, you have to be a licensed professional. For some reason, the government doesn't hold itself to the same standards, but I am the only one qualified to do the job in the private sector, and I have a lot to offer Arizona, and I am running to be the next state treasurer. Our current treasurer, Doug Ducey, has done a fabulous job, um, and he's been a successful private sector guy. So being a successful business, businessman myself, uh, I want to be the next in line to do a good job uh, for Arizona. All right, thank you very much. For the next opening statement, we turn to Hugh Hallman. Thank you, Ted. I am Hugh Holman, and I'm running for state treasurer because I have the right educational background, private sector experience, and commitment to public service that will serve you well. I have degrees in economics and accounting, as well as political science. Then I went on to law school, where I went to the University of Chicago and studied in a special program called the uh, Olin Fellowship in Law and Economics. I studied economics, finance, taxation, and securities law. I had to learn to write the kinds of documents that securities brokers only have to learn to read. I then came back to Arizona. For the last 26 years, I've served in the private sector, working with companies to help them through their finance and securities problems, among many, many other things. Companies you know, like Apple Computer. But I've always committed to the private and public sector experience. I've worked diligently for many, many charities, like Habitat for Humanity, but I've also held office. I was a Tempe City Councilman and mayor of the city of Tempe for eight years, where we worked to cut the budget and improve services. I look forward to bringing that fiscal prudence to the state, and I look forward to your vote. Thank Thanks. you very much. And now with our final opening statement, Randy Pullen. Hi, I'm Randy Pullen. I'm running for state treasurer. As mentioned earlier, I was the chairman of the Republican Party for four years, a very successful term, in fact, winning every statewide race, as well as supermajorities in both houses of legislature in 2010. But more importantly than that, I have 38 years of business experience. I'm a certified public accountant. I was a partner with Deloitte and Touche. My financial experience is immense, to say the least. And I think I would be the best treasurer the state of Arizona could ever expect to have. And I look forward to your support in this election. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now get the conversation started here. Jeff, we'll start with you. Um, would you change the office uh, compared to how it's being run right now? And if so, how? There are a few changes. Now, so you know, the office is run very, very well. Uh, Dean Martin stepped into uh, an office years ago that did need some changes. He, he did a great job, implemented many changes. Doug Ducey has expanded that. There are two main things that I can improve on in the office, and they're the two T's, the technology and the transparency. So right now, if you look at my 14 years uh, as CEO experience of EcoTrade, we lived on the cutting edge of financial technology. And what I can bring with my knowledge is improving. If you, if you look at the investment side of that office, we're running things on Excel spreadsheets. You look behind the screens and anyone can get a tour if you set it up ahead of time. A lot of Excel, a lot of things. With my knowledge, it'll save us money, make us more accurate, and improve our returns. And also the transparency. Doug Ducey, or Dean Martin, created the open checkbook. Doug Ducey expanded it. And what I would like to do is take it to the next level. If you look right now um, at the open checkbook, you can see all the transactions that Arizona does. I want to take it to the next level and put it into balance sheet style reports. 
And it gives us all a better way to see where the $9.3 billion we're spending is going. More of the same, improvement, change, what do you see? There are a lot of things actually, Ted, that need to be improved in terms of the technology specifically. The state has not invested not only in the treasurer's office technology, but across the board in the Department of Education and in other aspects. It's been decades since uh, we've had new technology upgrades. I've actually worked with the kinds of companies uh, that would provide that sort of assistance. But in addition, I think we have to understand that this is an administrative position. I've served in the capacity as the mayor of the city of Tempe working with our staff to take a city from 1,600 employees to 1,300 employees and improve efficiencies. We added technology there. I've run a public school, 49 staff members, almost twice the number of staff that are in the treasurer's office, and improved efficiencies there through technology, but also improved results while reducing costs. That's the kind of effort I would bring to the state treasurer's office. Randy, technology, transparency, what, what do you see here? Well, I think all those are correct, uh, the, but there's one more piece to the puzzle, which is the state of Arizona is putting in a new accounting system for next year, and it'll actually start up at this time next year. And I put in the state's last accounting system in 1982, and it's still in place as of today. So I understand the financial accounting system of the state of Arizona probably better than anybody could ever expect to understand. And so I look forward to the opportunity to be able to make sure that the new system the state puts in balances with the existing treasure system. Now, uh, Jeff re referred to the fact that there needs to be update on the investment side. There's no question about that. But let's don't forget, the state of Arizona spends $30 billion a year. And so the financial accounting side of that is critical. There are 26 people in the treasurer's office right now. Half of them are devoted to uh, handling the investment side. We have licensed professional money managers that work in the treasurer's office that actually do all the work with the the funds that are invested. So your job as treasurer is to manage those people. And in fact, there's another investment professional that's crucial to the role for the treasurer's office, and that's the person that's appointed by the treasurer to the investment board. The treasurer does not actually manage the investments. The staff does with direction from the investment board, and those investment decisions are made by that board. What's important about, in my view, the treasurer's role is that the treasurer remain independent of that decision-making process. Talk so, about, real quickly, yeah. I want you to add to that, the duties of the treasurer, because we've had treasurer debates before, and we've gone off into immigration, policy, all sorts of <laughs> public policy <laughs> issues. What, I'm sure this crew can do that too, Well, I'm like. sure they can. But what is, as you see it, the duty of the treasurer? The duty of the treasurer is to act as the state's bank and to oversee the investments of Arizona. That's it. That's the, the main job of the treasurer's office. And, and that's where Jeff and I disagree pretty, pretty. Okay, deeply. well, I'll get to you in a second. Okay, here, please. You, you obviously, your, your job, if you boil it down to the simplest terms, it's to protect Arizona taxpayers. That's the number one job of the treasurer. You're protecting Arizona taxpayers in, in every sense of the word. But they, they're trying to downplay the fact that they don't have investment backgrounds by saying it's not crucial to the job. It is absolutely crucial to the job to know, to understand what you're doing. To, like I said, as, as Mr. Hallman said, you oversee the people that actually do the investments. To do that in the private sector, you're required to have an even more exclusive securities license called the Series 24 to do that very same thing in the private sector. Well, Rand, well, hold was, on here, well, Randy. If it was important, they would require it in the requirements that the state treasurer, in fact, have a license. It, it's not required. Who better to deal with the state's bank, which is the treasurer's office, than someone as a partner with a major accounting firm, Deloitte & Touche, audited banks, savings and loans, took banks and savings and loans apart, sold the parts off, reorganized them. Who better to do that than myself? And in, and in fact, uh, I appreciate Jeff's comment that he has a securities license. He's talked about it on his own website as something that one could get by buying a $249 finance book, reading the book and taking the practice I don't practice even know where exams. you get that from. It's that from, is so, such it's, misinformation is well, terrible. Well, from your Echo Trade No, website. it is not. And, uh, You're insulting over 100,000 investment professionals across the country Mr. who studied for three to four months. I will now present. And you have to be sponsored by a firm to even get that. Okay. So, okay. so it's, I, it's I, horrific I will be happy to present that to the reporter who's uh, uh, with us uh, today. But in addition, uh, the reality is I took three years to study law and economics, including securities law. The point I was making earlier is it's crucial that the treasurer maintain an independent position from the actual decision-making process so that the treasurer can hold the entire process accountable to protect Arizona taxpayers. The very number one job called out in the statutes is that the treasurer must protect principal at all costs. That's job one. 
is safety, security of the investments. It's as if we have retirees' investment money and we have to protect the principal first. Okay, with, with that in mind, the idea of being prudent. First of all, do you think that the Office of the Treasurer here the past four years or so, has, has the Treasurer been prudent with the state's investments? I think uh, Doug Ducey's done a great job. And they, they actually uh, did some research. They actually looked at the, uh, the spread of how they were investing the assets and did a, a research project on that. And in fact, the treasurer was even more conservative than what they were suggesting in that study that was done. So I think he's done a very good job. He's, he's made money for the state in terms of uh, return on investment. Uh, they've changed the, the, the basic uh, allocation, which is now 60% stocks and 40% fixed assets. So that's probably the right move at the time. Do you, do you think there's, the office has shown a, a prudent method of investment, A, and B, has it been too prudent? Can you, can you get out there and do a little bit more for the state? No, I think they've done it, done it right, honestly. Doug Ducey has done a great job, and a lot of that comes back to the fact that he's been so successful in the private sector. We all know his success with Cold Stone Creamery, and no one can argue that he's been a very, very successful guy. When you take someone like that, a successful person from the, from the private sector, and they make our best elected officials. That's where I want to fall in line, too. They're knocking the success I've had with EchoTrade, but quite frankly, I started EchoTrade in 1999 with just a dozen traders and two programmers, and I grew to over 500 licensed professional exchange members by the end of the decade. Are Jeff, you knocking actually, his success? No. I, uh, in fact, what really starts this is he likes to knock other people's success. And the reality is not, is only, not, have I, not only have I had a successful private sector career, but I've always committed to the public sector. You've, you've seen that. And as a result, I have worked for the residents of the city of Tempe to reduce budgets and improve services. I've worked for a charity that is a school, and it is now one of the highest ranking public schools in the state of Arizona. That's a commitment I've made that I won't apologize for. Mr. DeWitt likes to call people who spend their time both in the private sector and the public sector career politicians. The interesting thing is he, he admires Mr. Ducey, who's now running for another office. You can't have it both ways. Either you're a career politician going from one office to another, or you recognize the fact that having experience in these jobs is important to serving Arizona's residents. Randy, is political experience in this job a good thing? Absolutely. Uh, of course, I like to first of all say I've never actually been paid to be a politician. I've always done it for free as party chairman and other positions. Uh, but knowing the politics is very critical, and I'll go back to the 2010 situation where the state was essentially bankrupt and we had to work our way out of it. Uh, I was in meetings every week with staff down at the governor's office and the legislature uh, looking at the different ways we could cut back on expenditures and how we we're going to get the budget balanced. And so the, and I, I look at going forward, we're going to have a similar situation in the future and the treasurer's ability to be able to work with those other people politically is very, very important. I would like to just uh, say one more thing. I think Jeff did start a, a very successful company, and I appreciate that. I've started companies too, and I know how hard it is to be successful as an entrepreneur, so I give him credit for having done that. I think it's very important. How much input do you think the treasurer should have over legislative policy, public policy? I mean, how much should you be involved with that when you got a $12, million, uh, $12 billion investment portfolio to take care of? No, I, I believe the treasurer needs to be really independent from the process. The treasurer needs to concentrate on job number one, which is protecting Arizona taxpayers and not get caught up in the politics that surrounds, obviously, the capital. I think keeping the, trender, the, the treasurer as independent as possible is where we need to be. And I want to respond to, to Mr. Holman's point. He says that because I say good things about our current treasurer that's now running for governor, that I'm supporting, you know, some kind of longtime politician. But no, and, and neither do we ever knock success. But Randy and I knock is when Mr. Holman tries to run on his background as mayor of Tempe and balancing the budget. But when you do that by increasing the property taxes on your residents by 70 percent, that's something to knock. I don't believe that the way to balance a budget is to give out government handouts and then raise your property taxes and your fees and, and everything else that goes along Need with Need a response. Uh, happy, happy to respond. First of all, it, I keep missing out on your first questions, which are uh, prudence and other things. Dean Martin has endorsed me for this office because he knows how I handle things as the mayor of the city of Tempe. When they can't come up with something real to say about my resume, stuff gets made up. The city of Tempe froze its property tax when I was mayor. It took almost 12 years to get that done. What we did was stop the games that politicians play of letting property value increases allow property tax increases to happen. So we froze the city of Tempe's property tax levy. 
Is it perfect? No. Why? Because the legislature, for example, changed the formula for the amount of property tax that residents pay versus the amount of tax that businesses pay. Ted, this is complex stuff. But unless you've actually been involved in it, you can't tell the difference between a property tax freeze and a property tax increase. More importantly, we actually reduced the city of Tempe's budget by more than 18%. Randy, you agree with that? Well, well, well no, because I, I can show you, you can go out to Maricopa County site and you will see that the while the property values in Tempe went down, if you look at the city of Tempe's taxes, you will see that in fact they went up. In fact, Mr. Hallman's now, taxes the fact went he up. Just that, skipped, that is, that is, he just said in fact. When property, the, the way our formula works for property tax, and this is where everybody's going to get bored, you have property value times rate no, no, the equals your ta is, property tax up. bill. Taxes the way went up. Tempe's yeah. property tax taxes collections went up. went up was the fact that we expanded the economy, and that's a good thing. That's exactly what Ronald the Reagan went stood for. Did, did, did the rising went tide lift that particular boat? It, the rising tide lifted values all boats went in down. Tempe. Randy, taxes went up. And now that values have gone up, rates have gone down. Let Randy speak, please. Values in Tempe went down, taxes went up, tax rates went up, and You know, that's he had to just correct line. himself. Tax rates went up. What he's talking no, about is total the game that politicians play property between property values and rates. Up. And what I finally got done for Tempe, and I think it should be done statewide, is as values go up, the rate automatically should come down, and that's what we did in Tempe. And now that property taxes, taxes tax, went up, now that property values have gone up, <laughs> what he's showing you is that we have he's, actually that's, collected. That is the he's, city of Tempe. He's showing us what, okay, what are you showing us there, Randy? Up. Yes. This, now what he's showing you is property off, tax the, collections came, went up. This came off the, the Maricopa County treasurer's website, who's endorsed me, by the way, and you can see every year property taxes in the city of Tempe went up. I'm, now, we're not talking about the state's taxes or the county's taxes. We're talking about the city of Tempe's taxes went up. And its total tax collections did go up, and that is a sign of success. Well, see, you go to te You go well, to Tempe. Okay, no, 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 Ted, no, let me finish okay, here. Please. He just said, trying to make it sound like I increased property taxes on individuals in Tempe. What has happened in Tempe is the economy grew. Go out and look at Tempe. Almost every politician is now taking okay. pictures at our town lake with all of the development okay, that's happening. Okay, we've got, is it fair that's to say property tax that he development. increased taxes when tax collections went up because, as he says, Things were getting better. Yeah, what he did was this in Tempe. They, they did increase their sales tax. But that went to a popular vote that he, he pushed there. Now, on the property tax level, they took the collection rate from $1.40 per 100000 of assessed value up to $2.48. When he says he froze it, what they ended up doing was in 2011, they froze it at 2008 levels. So as property values came down, when everyone expected to now save money on the taxes, they were now paying more every year pegged to inflation, frozen at the highest amount. And that's actually one of the, the reasons that one of my strongest bases of support comes from Tempe residents. You think as a longtime mayor and politician there, you would have support from your own constituents. But the reason, and the other reason is when they pushed that property tax hike through, they did it in an authoritarian manner where it didn't even go to a popular vote. And that's another wrong thing that I think politicians do when they, when they take these things and push them through by a vote of just themselves and not the so constituents. Last, last point on this, This, please. of course, is why people get fairly confused. All jurisdictions vote directly on these items. Secondly, property tax values have now gone up in Tempe precipitously and the rate's been ticking down exactly as it was intended to so that we don't have property tax increases. People like to confuse the difference between the property tax rate and property tax values when the, what matters is the bill that people pay. And the fact that you can't tell the difference between those things demonstrates it's too complex an issue no, for either of you to handle. complex. Let me just <laughs> sum it up this I thought way. it was the last time Let me just sum it up. Uh, okay. Okay. We got it. During the years when you just, property you just values... You they don't understand what you're talking about. When property, values, when property values were going up in those years in Tempe, when we had the bubble, they kept their tax rate the same, so they continued to have this increase in property taxes. And then when values went down, they increased their rate in order to keep their taxes up above where they were. Sure, sure. Now, so no, that's no, exactly point, what I'll went answer on. myself. And Mr. Pullen, here's the, here's your, the exact your property taxes I voted went up against personally. the fact that my council would not reduce the property tax rate when property values were going up because it imposes a property tax increase. Your viewers get that. So the way to finally solve the problem of having council members and other jurisdictions also say, I didn't increase your taxes, I kept the rate the same. 47 out of 50 years, values went up in Tempe, so property taxes went up, and I voted against the failure to reduce taxes every year. Am I ha do I have to live with that? You bet I do. But I finally got my council to understand that if we froze the bills, 
Everything okay. else takes care of itself. Okay. That's, and why now he's that rated, that's, that's why he's rated champion, champion of big government by Americans. But you know what, William, what else I'm hearing here? I'm hearing him saying that you simply don't understand. You, well, of course you we don't understand. understand I'm a CPA. I understand this exactly. He has to say that because he has no other way to... Well, but, but the I mean, situation what, what, of what increasing do, taxes. My, what do Republican voters my think? Eighth grade, what do, <laughs> my eighth grade students understand algebra. Well, Rate okay. times value equals bill. If you let, well, the, if you let the values go up okay. and don't reduce the rates as they discussed, yes. then your bill goes up. You have what to fix that. What do Republican that. voters think when they have this conversation going and one candidate, two candidates think one candidate is doing X, the other candidate says it ain't even close to X, it's Y, and by the way, you don't even understand X. What do they make of this? I think the best way to boil it down is you have two of us here with financial backgrounds saying that it did go up, the rate did go up, and you have one person, a longtime lawyer slash politician without a financial background saying it didn't. So if you can look at it as that or... Uh, or you can just call a friend of yours in Tempe and ask them because they all seem to have the same story. Do you notice how I did it again? He said, when you talk about the rate, that's exactly how my council and other councils and school districts get away with it. They say, I didn't increase your rate. I kept it the same. When your property values go up. Okay. What I did in Tempe was stop that game so that when values go up now, the rate automatically comes down as one expected. And so at the very end of my tenure, as property taxes hit the bottom, we froze property tax taxes but on the bills. Goes up. No, that's a collections <laughs> I got it. chart, Randy. It, 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 it still okay. Goes. We, we, I so think, Ronald I think Reagan we, was we a understand. failure because he got more money into the coffers as president of the United States by cutting tax rates. You would have called him a failure. You In increased tax rates. Increase we tax did not <laughs> increase tax difference. rates. We <laughs> did. Incre we froze property taxes and then grew the All economy. Right. Okay. So yeah. Tempe we property tax We are tax obviously at an impasse here, the and there, there's, there's not one a more. There's one more thing I want to ask here. A quote from each of you, at least a quote from your campaign on your websites. I'm going to start with you, Jeff. Yes. Quote, I look at candidates who want the job, not need a job. What that, are you saying here? What, what are you trying to say? That's a great quote, and I'm glad that I said that. <laughs> I've said that, and they've heard they may say it a lot of times. So uh, I love that quote. You know, what I'm trying to say is this. What, what I view, and, and I apologize, I don't want to be you know, say anything negative about my opponents, but, but they are look, longtime politicians looking for a stepping stone. Mr. Holman was running for governor last year and then made a deal to get in this race, to get in the treasurer's race, when, when his background suggests he should actually be running for attorney general. So um, instead of this job being a, a stepping stone for politicians, I believe this is someone that should want the job. I'm the only one, as I said, credentialed to do this job in the private sector. I've been doing finance for 21 years and doing a great job of it. I'm the only one that wants this job, and I'm the only one qualified to do this job in the private sector. Randy, the quote from you was, uh, Arizona must continue to be a loud voice in standing up to broken policies in Washington. Is that the job of the treasurer of Arizona? The job of the treasurer of Arizona, obviously, is to, one, make sure all the bills for the state get paid, and two, make sure that the money that the state does invest is handled properly, safely, and, and the way it's supposed to be under statute. But at the end of the day, we are in a terrible situation here where the states are literally almost at war with what's going on in Washington, D.C., and we in Arizona have stood up in the past, and I think we need as a state to continue to stand up to support the state's rights and to support what is the correct thing for our citizens to want, which is that we control things at the state level. That's why we have the 10th Amendment, and that's why the federal government is way overstepping its bounds, and we at the state level need to continue to push back on Washington, D.C. Hugh, uh, quote, uh, it's time we balanced Arizona's budget in a real and sustainable way. Correct. Job of the Treasurer's it Office? It is the job of the Treasurer's Office, and I'll also respond to Mr. DeWitt here that I'm somehow seeking a job. Uh, I've actually uh, retired in a way from my private sector work because I've done well enough to allow my family to, to continue doing what it wants to do. I think Mr. DeWitt's done similar things. In terms of the treasurer's office, the reason I'm running is because I investigated whether or not I should run for governor. My kids wrote me a letter and said, Dad, we'd like to see the state of Arizona do better. You did great things in Tempe. We think you ought to do something. What I realized is almost everything I was talking about were fiscal issues. And when the race got fairly crowded, I realized I don't need to be in the big chair. The goal was to provide some service to the, to the state of Arizona, the fiscal prudence that would allow us to balance our budget. We right now have a budget that's about $9 billion in debt. We've run up a $9 billion debt since March of 2008. 
I did just the opposite in Tempe. We doubled our reserves during the good years so we could make our way through the bad years. I'm going to advocate for that approach for the state of Arizona because we okay. should not be borrowing our children's right. future to we, pay for current we services. We've got to stop you right there because each candidate is now going to give us a one-minute closing statement. Going in reverse order of the opening remarks, we start with Randy Pullen. Thank you. I was working on a job with one of my uncles who since passed away a few years ago, and he commented to me one day that uh, growing older, getting lucky is really remembering which room you walked into and why you walked into the room. Well, I'm getting older, but I still am pretty lucky at what I do, and I think I can serve the state of Arizona very well going forward. My background, which includes business, 38 years of finance as a CPA, as well as the former chairman of the Republican Party, really suits well to serve in the role as treasurer for the state of Arizona. I look forward to working with the new governor, as well as the leadership in the legislature, to balance Arizona's budget, and I look forward to uh, helping Arizona grow in the future. And that's why the governor, as well as 20 legislators, have endorsed me to be your next treasurer because they know I can do the job. All Thank right. You. Thank you very much. For our next closing statement, we turn to Hugh Hallman. Thank you, Ted. Thank you all for the opportunity to be here this evening. I am Hugh Hallman, and I am running for state treasurer because I believe I have the educational background. I have a, the law degree. That's true. But I studied in finance, economics, and accounting, among other things, to provide that service to the state of Arizona. I have a public sector uh, record that's demonstrated success. Most people know where the city of Tempe is. Most people see that it's now a boom town. The current council members are all now ranked friends of the taxpayers because they have to live with the fiscal policies that I developed over eight years as mayor of the city of Tempe. Those are the same kinds of policies that I hope to bring to the state of Arizona to get our budget balanced. I've worked with our legislators over the past couple of decades to work on improving how Arizona does its business. My goal is to advocate for you as your chief financial advocate to get our budget back in balance, to get our fiscal house in order, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. And now, Jeff DeWitt. Thank you. I, the main thing I like to get across at, at all the meetings we go to is it's a very important job to pay attention to for the reason that the better your state treasurer does, the less Arizona needs of your taxes. I'm the only one here that's not a politician. I'm the only one here with the, the resume and the background to do this job in the private sector, and I've had a lot of success over 21 years doing this job in the private sector. I'm the only one here that is standing up to Obamacare and did not support the Medicaid expansion, as has been talked about a lot in this race, that the Heritage Foundation estimates will cost Arizona $2.8 billion by 2022. And I'm the only one fighting against the government handouts, and I'm the only one that hasn't raised taxes. I will continue to do that. I will continue to fight against tax increases and fight to protect Arizona taxpayers. And I, I really want to be your next state treasurer, and I'm asking for your vote. So please go to my website, jeffdewitt.com, and God bless you. All right, thank you all, and uh, yeah, the debate Obama. goes on. Thank Medicaid. you, candidates, and thank Obama you for watching this special vote 2014 Clean Elections debate featuring the Republican candidates for treasurer. Our next debate will take place Monday, July 14th, when we hear from Democrats running for superintendent of public instruction. That's it for now. I'm Ted Simons. Thanks for joining us. You have a great evening. is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Eight, members of your Arizona PBS station. Thank you.